everyone welcome back to my channel this is dr shilpi here and this video is a continuation of the previous video on dental considerations in liver patients so let's get started talking about any other drugs that we use for dental uh, use we basically whatever drugs that we are giving we have to lower the dose and the frequency which is there we, sh we should give less frequent doses so basically if we're giving doses twice we reduce it to only once so we have to lower the dose and less frequent doses have to be given over short periods and now coming to local anesthetics we have already discussed about the antibiotics so coming to local anesthetics they have to be given with caution because amides they get metabolized in the liver then we have articaine which is metabolized mainly in the plasma and prilocaine is partly metabolized in the lungs so they are little more safer and they cause less toxic side effects when compared to the normal local anesthetics that we use in dentistry then all the NSAIDs are kind of contraindicated because of their antiplatelet action and because there is increased risk of gastrointestinal bleeding in patients taking NSAIDs. NSAIDs are usually contraindicated but if we need to give the paracetamol is the first drug that we give and 2 to 3 grams safety dose per day can be given and you can increase the dose up to 4 gram but it is usually safe to keep the maximum limit to 2 gram per day then this is the first line of drug even in the alcoholic serotic patients it shows good tolerance up to 2 gram per day and also there is increased risk of hepatotoxicity in NSAIDs so most of the NSAIDs they depend on protein mediated transport but because the production of proteins is decreased in liver patients NSAIDs are not getting enough protein for transport so because of that the their levels increase in the blood so therefore we need to prescribe lower doses of NSAIDs then coccyps they are there is little less literature on coccyps but they are, do not interfere with platelet and renal metabolism so they are better tolerated but still you should be used with caution then coming to weak or uh, opioids they have to be also used with caution the toxicity increases in case of hypoalbuminemia and you should give laxatives for constipation and encephalopathy which is a side effect of these drugs then after paracetamol low dose trimadol can be given that is the second line of analgesic in cirrhotic patients then benzodiazepines in these that also the dose should be decreased and the interval between the doses should be increased if the patient is on benzodiazepines Then because there is xerostomia in these patients and because there is increased risk of caries in these patients, we can give, ask the patient to take increased sips of water or sugar free candies which will promote salivation in their mouth. Also fluoride application can be done in such patients. Then nystatin suspension can also be given in these patients. There is increased risk of candidiasis in such patients. Then the diet restriction should be done in these patients. Leak, if you are performing any kind of surgery, full leak patient should be on full liquid diet for 24 to 48 hours. And, uh, and the patient should be, uh, be on a soft diet for at least 1 to 2 weeks so that the clot that is present, there is no movement of the oral cavity, there is not much movement of the oral cavity and the clot which is there is protected and the healing takes place completely so these are the main cons uh, dental considerations in liver patients but if you take a history of the patient and the patient is gives a history of hepatitis b or hepatitis c so in such patients some additional precautions need to be taken make sure that you have received your vaccination for hepatitis b and if at all and make sure you don't there is not much aerosol production when you're treating these patients you don't get exposed to blood as such you wear your gloves properly wear a protective attire when you're treating these patients so that whenever there is a uh, there should not be any splash of blood whenever you are treating these patients then safe disposal of your gloves and whatever head cap whatever protective attire that you're wearing has to be disposed of properly and even the micromotor or the water 
water line that you are using, dental unit, that has to be sterilized and even air rotor can be heat treated and it can also, you know, we can dip the instruments into 2% uterine, uterine aldehyde or Cydex which is known as in these patients for hepatitis. After treating the patient, make sure that the area around is cleaned properly because hepatitis B, it has been found, studies have shown that hepatitis B can stay outside the body for seven days and it has been seen that hepatitis C virus can be can stay up to six weeks outside the body. Then even after taking all the precautions, if you get exposed to hepatitis B while treating the hepatitis B patients, make sure if you are not vaccinated, you receive an injection of uh, immunoglobulin, hepatitis B immunoglobulin within 24 hours and you should not delay it more than one week. Then on the same day if you want when you are if you are not vaccinated if you've taken the immunoglobulin on this side you can take the hepatitis b vaccine on the other side on the same day if you want and if you get exposed and there is if you get pricked while treating a hepatitis b patient make sure you wash the area properly with a tap water or with a sterile water and make sure you don't rub that area and you press it from behind so that some blood comes out from there from the site of where you've got pricked so that it reduces the viral load so all these things need to be taken care of That brings us to the end of the video. If you have any doubts or queries, you can leave a message in the comment section below. And if you've liked the video, do hit the like button. And don't forget to share and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you.